we go back to back with no rest. You see this sweat? That's because I'm not resting. In between sets, we get right to work with it. Like real man supposed to. Real man move. Right back to work with it. combat wounds. What's up, family? Tank Commander Zulu back at you once again and the Real Man Movement. Salute to all my subscribers, all those who watch the videos, share the videos, give it a thumbs up, and leave a comment. I greatly appreciate you and I salute you once again, today, here at the Real Man Movement, I want to deal with the position of dealing with a person who is full of themselves. That's right, you heard it. A person who is full of themselves. What does that mean to a real man? And what does it mean here at the Real Man Movement? Let's get into it. Fire in the hole, baby. Hey, yo. These squats give you running through walls type of strength. Running through walls type of strength. You gotta do the squat. You cannot, ex you cannot ignore the squat. If you defeat the squat and conquer the squat, you become an overall better athlete. Check it out. Don't be afraid to go get it. What does it mean to be full of yourself? Well, many times you've probably encountered a person who is actually full of nothing but themselves. That means they're full of nothing but their own understanding and their own way of thinking. How do you handle a person who is full of themselves? And you have to also always ask the question, are you full of yourself? Just like I asked the question, am I full of myself? When I say full of myself, meaning that I have no room for any other positive feedback. I have no room for anything else. I have no room for an objective opinion because I'm full of myself. I have no room for some truths that I may not be seeing at the time because I'm full of myself. A person who's full of themselves is dangerous, not only to other people, but to themselves. It's good to have a strong sense of who you are and to take a position and stand firmly on that position. And I applaud that. I'm actually that type of person myself. But I've learned over the years that I cannot be so full of myself that I do not have room for anything else. Meaning that I don't have room to learn. We never, we're never too wise or we never get too much wisdom to where we are unable to learn. No matter how long you live, no matter what your experiences may be, you can still learn. You can learn from other people. If you are not full of yourself. Back at it. Leg day. Your heart should be beating on leg day. Should be beating. There you go, young bull. Give it to him. Ah. Come on. Ah, there you go. Ah. When you're full of yourself, there's no room for anything else. Someone's opinion 
could have valid points. But because you're so full of yourself, you only want to argue that opinion. You don't want to receive it in a proper way to where both individuals can come to a common understanding about whatever they're discussing or whatever the situation may be, and that we both leave enriched, meaning that we both leave learning something from one another. You see, that, that's a healthy way of dealing with self. It's unhealthy when you are full of yourself that you cannot see or understand the position of other people. It's a very, very strong dynamic, actually. And I call it a dynamic because in all actuality, it can produce some situations. Meaning that it can produce, being fully yourself can produce separation from people. It can produce a thought process about you if you're full of yourself to other people. Other people may think that because you're so full of yourself that it doesn't make any sense to engage in conversation or discussion with you because they automatically know that whatever your position and opinion is you're not gonna you don't have any room to receive any other truths outside of what you believe because you are full of yourself here we go there you go son ah you can get that one more dig deep and get it get it there you go walk him in there you go Ooh, that's that back to back work like drake we coming back to back when something is full no matter how much you pour into it it doesn't retain it it doesn't receive it it simply overflows it gets spilled it makes a mess and that's how it is when you're dealing with people or a person who is full of themselves and if you allow them to they'll leave the conversation damaging you no one leaves enriched but that particular person who is full of themselves are there any truths in what that particular person represents? Possibly. Is everything or all their opinions right? Never. Never. And see, that's the danger with being full of yourself. At times when I deal with certain people, when I deal with athletes, I have to understand what type of person that I'm dealing with. Am I dealing with a person who is talented, who is gifted, but wants to learn a little deeper, not based off of what they think they already know, but based off of what makes sense and what they're able to receive if they are not full of themselves. Get that work, son. Nothing beats hard work. No technique or none of that. I don't care about all that technique stuff. I care about working hard. That's what proves results. Technique don't prove results like hard work. Work hard. Get the heart going. Get the blood running through the muscles. Sound mind, sound body, baby. Real man moving. I've met and dealt with people who were so full of themselves that no matter what advice you try to give them, based off your experience, no matter what type of counsel you try to give them, based off your facts, no matter what type of guidance you try to give them, based off of logical reasoning, they're so full of themselves that they simply cannot receive it. Remember. It's like that bucket that's already full of water and you're trying to pour something into it. It won't receive it. 
it only overflows and makes a mess because it's full it's already full here at the real man movement our goal is to produce men who are who have strong self-awareness but are not full of themselves we want men real men to be filled with many things that enrich them and that when we as real men encounter other people whether it's man or woman we're not so full of ourselves that we try to make ourselves seem as though we are superior thinkers or superior people but we want to be able to converse with individuals evenly meaning that whatever you have in way of experience and knowledge you're, you should be able to convey that to the person in a way to where you don't look as though you are full of yourself and in conveying whatever wisdom that you have you should also always be ready to receive whatever wisdom they have because you're not full of yourself but if you are full of yourself whatever wisdom that individual has at whatever level they are you won't learn from it because you'll simply try to challenge it with what you're full of yourself you won't grow any longer because you refuse to receive wisdom from any other place outside of yourself because you're full of yourself see this is that work after coming off the squat rack doing the finishing up work gotta get that, that blood surging through them thighs only way you get the blood moving is work work the real work is in the squat rack these other exercises we just icing on the cake, baby. Being full of yourself stunts your growth. It limits you as an individual. And as a real man, it interferes with the progress of being not only masculine, but being and, and representing the right type of masculinity to all that we meet. Masculinity is more than just being strong physically but here at the real man movement we concentrate on being strong spiritually mentally and physically and making the connection you know speaking of being full of yourself in the bible in the book of daniel daniel chapter 4 it talks about a king his name was nebuchadnezzar he was the king of Babylon, a very prosperous king. He was mighty in his rule as a king. He was so full of himself that he thought that all the success in the making of that kingdom and the position of that kingdom at the time, which was at the top, was all because of what he thought he knew. He thought he knew everything and that because he knew everything, he produced the success of the kingdom. That's what he thought. But he began to have some weird dreams. And in having those dreams, they vexed him so much that he called for someone to interpret these dreams. And once the dreams were interpreted, were, were interpreted, and that the, the end result of it was that the dreams he was having was about him being his kingdom being taken away from him and him being cast into the wilderness. Well, that dream actually came true. He was humbled. He was pushed away from people. Now, pay attention to this because this is where being full of yourself affects us today even today 
It will drive you away from people. King Nebuchadnezzar was driven away from people into the wilderness to live like a beast. In other words, people separated themselves from him totally. But he was so stuck in his ways that he was driven into the wilderness to live like a beast. He went from being a king to living like a beast. It was so bad being full of himself affected him so badly that he went from eating at a king's table to eating grass out of the ground like a beast. His hair got so matted that it looked like the feathers of an eagle. His nails grew so long that they looked like the talons of an eagle. In other words, he was simply living in the wilderness with devoid all the things that a king has or that, the, that he once had. The luxuries of being a king, everything was stripped from him because he was full of himself. And he was sent into the wilderness to live that way for seven years until he was humbled. He pointed his head up to the sky and he prayed. And he acknowledged that every success that he had as being a king wasn't because of what he knew, but it was because of the mercy and grace of God. And he began to recognize God for who he was and everything was restored to him. But he learned a lesson from that. He got his kingdom back from being humble. He was so full of himself once upon a time that he, would, he didn't even want to receive what God had for him. And that's the problem with people who are full of themselves. Whatever little success they think they have, they believe it's all because of them. They believe, it, they believe it's because they're so educated. They believe it's because they were so smart. They believe, well, I worked hard for this. I sacrificed for this. And in their own understanding, that's true. But they neglect the knowledge of receiving where the real success came from. That was King Nebuchadnezzar, y'all. And that situation exists today with people who are full of themselves. Total body dominance, baby. Head to tail, we work it all. Hamstrings. Work them hamstrings. There you go. See, real men work every part. We don't. We're not afraid of no exercise. You can't be afraid of an exercise. You gotta work through it. I mean, every part of your body gotta be worked. It don't have to be to have the biggest muscles, it have to be worked. There'll come a day, no matter how rich you are, no matter how powerful you may be, financially, socially, whatever it may be, that you'll be humbled. It doesn't matter who you are. No one gets around this. If you are full of yourself, meaning that there is no room to receive any positivity from anyone else, there's no room to even be, to receive correction from anyone else. Why? Because a person who is full of themselves simply believes that everything that they have, that they alone produced. Just like in the Bible in Daniel 4 with King Nebuchadnezzar. He thought the same way, y'all. And that thinking eventually made him be humbled. It broke him. It took him out of his comfort zone of being a king. It drove him away from people. You see, 
a person who is full of themselves drives people away from them. And you can always tell. They'll be with this group of people for a while, then they drive them away. They'll be with another group of people for a while, then they drive them away. They tend to drive people away because they are full of themselves. They simply cannot receive anything of substance from anyone else because they believe they have the all being understanding the all being knowledge that they have the all the only way of achieving and advancing that they have the answer to everything which is simply not true we learn from one another continually a real man is confident in himself but he is also respectful to the understanding of others instead of immediately tearing someone down what can we receive from them as real men we should be looking for what we can receive from people no matter what their position may be not instant not instantly trying to assert assert our authority or our superior so-called superior way of thinking to assert that above the thinking process of someone else we should never do that because it puts us in a place like King Nebuchadnezzar full of ourselves looking at the kingdom and saying look what I did knowing that along the way he didn't do everything himself at the end of the day all of that was taken away from him what happens to a person who's full of themselves based off of what they believe they accomplished what they believe they've done what they believe they've, they have achieved when it's taken away from them what happens Society has shown us that many people kill themselves. How many times that we've heard wealthy stock investors, hedge fund managers, literally kill themselves because of financial situations. Some of them were involved in Ponzi schemes and they were caught. Instead of facing the judgment, they kill themselves. They jump out of windows. These people who are so full of themselves financially, making millions and millions of dollars, used to live in that particular lifestyle. Believing that their thought process is stronger than anyone else's, somewhere along the line, they get humbled. And I'm only using stock investors, not, not investors, but those who work in the stock market. I'm only using that as an example because we pretty much know socially many of them who were in situations like that and who are not in situations like that anymore because they were humble. Getting some of that hamstring work. It's an often ignored area of the body these hamstrings but in order to achieve total body dominance and hardness you got to work every area of the body you got to work it smartly that's how you prevent injury got to work them hamstrings there you go work work it's a real man movement baby we do it all people who are full of themselves drive other people away from them. A real man is not full of himself. He's confident of who he is, but he also pays attention to wisdom that, should, that can be produced from someone else and learn and grow from it. In other words, he's not too full of himself to receive. Never be too full of yourself to receive, 
to receive knowledge, to receive understanding. And as you converse with someone or you interact with someone, you both should leave the conversation enriched. Not mad, not disgusted, not offended, but enriched. That's what real men do. That's the position we support here at the Real Man Movement. Thank you for rocking with Tank Commander Zulu once again. I salute you, baby. Everybody that has subscribed, gave a thumbs up, share the videos, leave a comment, continue to support the Real Man Movement. Tell your friends about it. Tell your friends, check out Tank Commander Zulu's YouTube channel. There's nothing but positivity coming from this channel. Remember, fear no man but God, baby. No man but God. Tank Commander Zulu, signing out.